On the racing circuit, one event, more than any other, came to symbolize the quest for speed. It started at Monaco in 1913. Jacques Schneider, the French Undersecretary for Air, wanted to promote the design of seaplanes. He donated a magnificent trophy for which international teams would compete. After the war, the Schneider Cup became the most coveted prize in aviation. Italy won it in 1920, 21, and Britain in 1922. Then the Americans sent a team of Navy pilots who swept the board, the winner reaching 181 miles an hour. The secret lay in their new Curtis D-12 engines, which could be cooled by water even at very high power. In 1925, an American Army pilot, James Doolittle, won the trophy. Then the United States government withdrew financial support, leaving the Schneider Cup to the Europeans. The British came up with a new contender, the Supermarine S-5, a new monoplane racer designed by R.J. Mitchell. The wings were thinner and therefore had to be braced. And it was braced all over, almost like a birdcage. We apprentices, who reckon we knew more than our bosses, looked at that and said, what are all those wires on it? We thought that was all wrong. And then I went to see it on the slipway. And I was highly impressed. It was this beautiful aeroplane, streamlined, um, slim. To me, the perfect aeroplane that existed. Once again, it was engine power which counted. The sound of the engines was marvelous, of course. Especially on the turns when it came down off the glide with a full power. It really was something that made him blood tingle. So it was very, very thrilling and exciting. You could see this little dot buzzing along, and the noise of the engine, which was a great roar, came very much reflected off the water, of course, across the sediment, and you could see the airplane was at least half a mile ahead of the sound. The 1927 race was held in Venice between the Italians and the British. Both teams had new aircraft. The Italian M52s gradually dropped out with engine problems, leaving two S5s to romp home. Flight Lieutenant Webster won at 281 miles an hour. Webster returned to his hometown of Walsall to a hero's welcome. Once again, the search for more speed lay in more power. Rolls-Royce took up the challenge. Their R series of engines had many of the features of America's D-12, but they now produce nearly 2,000 horsepower. These engines were really just made for the racing to start with. They found the engine worked fine for 20 minutes or half an hour, but of course that wasn't good enough. We wanted a bit more than that. And eventually they managed to produce at least an hour and a half absolute reliability. The new S6 racers with the R engines were only just ready in 1929. If Britain could win two more races, it could keep the Schneider Cup forever. A national will develop to do so. People came from all over the place. There were huge crowds on, the, on the, all the beaches. And it was a very exciting business. The amount of technology that went into those aeroplanes was tremendous. I mean, they really were touching on the sort of limits of aviation possibility. Britain won the 1929 race. And in 1931, John Booth ended the saga of the Schneider Cup by winning it outright. Then George Stainforth broke the world speed record at 407 miles an hour. 